words. Yes, I love it with good spelling. Yeah, everybody's got unique gifts because God made us that way. You know, how many know, how many know the Lord's called us to be a part of becoming one, his body becoming one? And listen, we've got to appreciate, everybody say appreciate, appreciate. the unique gifts, the, the different, different parts, parts of the body. body. How many of the Bible tells us, don't you say hand, I don't have need of you, or toe, I don't have need. The Bible talks to us and tells us, don't you hate on other parts. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't you be hating. Okay, everybody turn to your neighbor and say, don't you be hating. Because every part is needed. And you know what I've begun to realize, Brother Clay, is God has intentionally made us needy for the other parts of the body. Come on, are you here? See, it, the people that think that they can do it or they've got the corner on everything are very mistaken. Because the Lord is going to cause us to depend on the Methodists to see this thing finished up. He's going to cause us to depend on the Baptists to see this finished up the way it needs to be. Because he said in the last days he was going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. And he also said this. He said that when we become one as they are one, the Father and, the, and Jesus are one, that the world would know that Jesus came from heaven, came from the Father. Amen? Sounds pretty important, doesn't it, to know the unity of the body and to see that happen, right? Somebody say, every part of the church is needed. And this is not the church right here. This is a part of the church. Somebody say, the church. Come on, kids. Everybody say, the church is the people, not the building. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the church is the people, not this building. This is very important to know because... Some people think that this is the church. It is not the church. And if you unfortunately and I unfortunately think that, then we will go out and we will quit being who we are. Because we think we can only do it here. How many of you can praise outside of here? How many of you can sing and declare God's goodness and, and be a part of the church outside of here? Yeah. This is not supposed to be go turn the light switch off and then turn it back on you when we get back on Sunday. That's not how this works. And I believe that God is raising up his church all across this county, this region, this nation, and the nations of the earth. Amen? Amen. we got more people that are going to come in, and they're going to need the same thing you need. Okay? Everybody say one egg and one paper. And so here we go. So when they come in, they're coming in. Um, but tonight, I want to talk about this egg. Everybody look at this egg. I want to talk about this. And, and I want to go through it together. And you say, what does it have to do with anything? It has a lot to do with a lot of things. Everybody come on in. We've got everybody needs an egg and everybody needs a paper. I know it seems weird, but I'm, you ought to be used to it by now, right? <laughs> so eggs are in the bucket and then we got papers with Pastor Lizzie. We want everybody to have one. Everybody grab one real quick. Uh, right over here. Eggs and papers. And um, Okay. So. Everybody shake it. It's kind of interesting. What is in there? Don't you want to know? Well, you can't know yet. Okay, so we're going to make this really short and clear and awesome tonight. All right, I want us to do this. I want us to turn to the second page here. Turn to the second page. We're going to look at this. We're going to read a scripture. I'm reading one scripture for you tonight. Just one. Everybody say just one. Okay, Hebrews 4.12. Everybody ready? Say, I'm ready for the word. Okay, this is the scripture. For the word of God. Everybody say, for the word of God is living, is active, is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul, of spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Does anybody know what joints are and marrow? Does you know what joints and marrow are? Joints. Joints. Anybody know? Joints. What are joints? What are joints? Yes. Thank you. But what is that? What are joints a part of? You just said the word. The body. Everybody say body. So what is this thing? It says the word of God. Everybody say the word of God is living, is active. And then it goes on and it says that, that the word of God divides like a sword. Everybody know what a sword does? What does a sword do? It, it what? It cuts. 
it divides, divides it separates, separates doesn't it? And, and so, so the Bible says the word of God separates us into three parts. parts. Everybody lift up your hands, three parts. Three parts. Three parts. Three three parts. parts. Everybody say spirit. Everybody, Everybody say spirit. spirit. Soul. Soul. Body. body. Now, now would you say this? Say, I am a spirit. I have a soul. And I live in a body. Say it again. I am a spirit. I have a soul, and I live in a body. Okay, now the spirit is the innermost part of man. But what do you think the outermost part of man is? What Can you see my spirit? Can you see my spirit? No, what can you see of me? My body, my flesh. So everybody open the first layer here. The, the outside, it's kind of like an egg. The outside of an egg is the shell. It's the part of the egg that you can see. And so this is just an outward part. Everybody wave the first part around. This is just the outward. That's all it is. Somebody say, this is all it is. How do you know the good stuff is not really on the outside here, is it? The real deal is on the inside. How many want to eat the shell? How many would like, if I had a real egg, I was going to bring one tonight, Brother Clay, but I didn't have time. How many would like to crunch up some shell and eat it? No, nobody cares about the shell. They discard the shell. But how many know it's different in our world today with our bodies? We're constantly thinking about, well, am I fat? Am I skinny? Am I tall? Am I short? Am I, am I everything I need to be? What do I look like? People like the fake bake can. You know, they're too white, too dark, too is in between, dark meat, light meat. I don't know. They're just, it's just everybody's consumed with the shell. But turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is just. You're not, not waving, waving at them. This, this is just a shell. shell. That's, That's all it is. Why would we pay so much attention to the shell? But I tell you what, there's never been so much concern about the shell ever. The world is consumed with the shell. And how many know that the shell is not where it's at? Your life will be empty if you focus on the shell. Now, do you say, no, then do I need to take care of my body? Yes, and I'm working on it. I mean, working on it. Yes, yes because, because listen, listen, what happens if you don't have a body anymore? You're, You're not going to be so here, are you? Bye-bye. <laughs> right? If, if you, you don't, don't take care of this, if I don't take care of this, we got to work on it, don't we? How many need to work on it? we got to work on it because, listen, if we lose our shell, we're gone. Somebody said that 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 uh, call, called their body, it's just an earth suit. It's what enables you to still be here. If you lose your body, it, you're gone. You're out of here. And guess where you're going to get to be if you're a believer with the Lord? Am I excited that if you were to die tonight, because you know Jesus, you would be right present with the Lord? Isn't that wonderful? The Bible says everyone that made Jesus makes Jesus Lord and Savior of their life, that they, the moment they take their last breath, they're present with the Lord. But this is just a shell. Somebody say, it's just a shell. It shouldn't be our main focus, should it? It's just a shell. Now, smart kids, as we are talking about this, this picture of this egg that's black and white, you can color it if you want to, and maybe even write the different parts. But everybody say, the shell, wave it, everybody, the shell, it's the body. It symbolizes the body. Okay, so I'm going to throw this one. Well, I'm going to put this down. I won't throw it tonight. I like to throw stuff, but we're not going to do it tonight. Okay, so now, wave the second part. The Word of God is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword, and it pierces to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. We said joints and marrow is the body. The shell, the outward part is the body. Now, I know obviously these are all an eggshell-looking thing, but let me tell you something. The next layer, everybody say the next layer, is the soul. Does anybody know what the soul is? It's your mind. Yes. It's, it's an, an inside, inside part of you. It is an inside part of you. It's, it's not, not the deepest, deepest most inner, innermost part, but it's, it's another level of you. you. How do you know you have a mind? You do. And, and I'm not talking just about your little brain. brain. Okay? okay? Our, Our brain, brain is a physical part, part but you know how you know we have thoughts. Everybody, have, wave your hand if you have thoughts sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes they're good thoughts, and sometimes they're not good thoughts that we've got to get rid of. But we have a soul part. Somebody say, my soul is my mind, my will, my emotions. I mean, there's a part of you that you cannot see. 
It's not the body, but there's, there, there's, there's thoughts and there's, there's emotions. How many you know that sometimes the soulish realm can be up and down, right? Your will can be all over the place. Your emotions can be all over the place. How many know emotions are not bad? Everybody say emotions are not bad. But they're not everything. How many would wave your big hand in the air and say, I'm glad that I didn't do everything I thought about doing? I'm glad everything that I thought about didn't work out. Anybody glad, kids, you glad you didn't always say everything that you thought? Do everything that you thought? Our emotions are not everything. It's not wrong to have emotions. God gave us emotions. I think sometimes in the church we act like we shouldn't have emotions. You have to be a person of faith. You have to be faith. Faith. You know, stuff. Faith. You know. I can't cry. Jesus wept. What are you going to do with that? You know, emotions are real. Thinking is very powerful and important. The Bible tells us in Romans 12, 1 and 2 to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That is the soulish realm. It's the soulish realm. If I say the soul is the next layer. Come on, rattle it. It's the next layer. But it's not the innermost layer. But the word of God does divide these layers. Okay? Now, everybody say we're ready for the next level. Pop it open. This is the last level. Anybody wonder what's in here? Jelly beans. Yay! How many people like jelly beans? So did Ronald Reagan. <laughs> jelly beans. You know, this, I, listen, don't eat your spirit. Some of you naughty people are ready to eat it. Listen, do not eat your spirit. <laughs> what did we talk about at church? Well, we talked about not eating our spirit. That's what we talked about. Okay, look at me. Everybody, don't eat it yet. Listen, I have some extras in the cup because I knew some of you will eat your spirit up in here tonight. I know it's not right, but, you know, anyway, <laughs> you're going to do it. So I got you an extra one. So if you eat your spirit between now and the time I get through talking, kids, I'll give you another spirit. I know it kind of sounds weird, but anyway. <laughs> okay, everybody say, my spirit is the real me. Come on, everybody say, my spirit is the real me. Yeah, it's the part of you that connects with God. Everybody say, the spirit of man knows God. How many you know that God, you don't know God with your mind, just your mind. I know you can think on him, but how do we know God? We know in our spirit. Everybody put your hand on your belly. The Bible says that living water flows out of your belly, that's your spirit. There's a depth of man. There's an innermost being of man. That's where you feel the peace of God. Anybody ever felt peace of God down in your belly? Yes or no? Don't act like you've been up all night and tired. Listen, to, I know you are, but you got to wake up with me. I came too, amen? You, you, gotta, you have a peace down inside, and you just know it's the right thing to do, amen? That's the spirit of man. Or maybe you, you feel troubled down in your gut in the innermost man. That's your spirit, man, saying this is not right. This part of you, everybody said this part of me is the most important part. The inner man. That's where we're led by the spirit of God. And, and the Lord leads us. He talks to us in our spirit, in the innermost being. And the Bible says, though, that the word of God is living. If you have to eat your spirit, do it now. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. And it divides the soul and the spirit. Everybody say soul and spirit. Joints and marrow. Can I say the word of God? Everybody say the word of God divides my spirit, my soul, and my body. Okay, now can I read it to you in another version real quick? This is the last scripture. Can I do it? Everybody say, yeah, yeah. Somebody say, for we have, oh, come on, kids. For we have, not everybody's saying it. For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy. And it pierces more sharply than a two-edged sword. It will even penetrate to the very core of our being. Don't y'all love that? And where soul and spirit, everybody say soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. Don't you love that? The word of God will pierce to the core of your being where soul, spirit, and bone and marrow meet. Isn't that wonderful? So it interprets, everybody say it interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our heart. So, Let's look at this one more time. Okay. What is the outermost part 
of you. Shout it out. The shell. And what is that shell called? The body. So we've got the outermost part is the body. Okay? And that part, the Bible tells us to crucify it. To crucify the flesh. I mean, you know, our body sometimes has desires that God doesn't have for us. Amen? You can't do everything that feels good and turn out all right. I mean, sometimes you feel like laying a hand suddenly. Sometimes you may feel like saying a not nice word. But the thing is, that's the flesh. That's the body. It's the shell, and it shouldn't be given, given control. It's just the house. Everybody say house. Do you, does your house tell you what to do, or do you tell your house what to do? Hey, Drake, does your house ever say, Drake, you can't leave today? No, okay. No. <laughs> your house shouldn't tell you what to do. Your body shouldn't tell you what to do. The body is supposed to be the temple of God. It's supposed to house the soul and the spirit. Now, the middle part, what's the middle part? Your mind. The Bible tells us to renew our mind. How do you renew your mind? Read the word of God. Everybody say, read the word of God. That's the best thing to do for the soul is to read the word of God, to renew your mind. Amen. So that you'll think in line with your spirit, with your heart that knows Jesus. Okay, so we got the body, we got the soul, and then what's the innermost part one more time? The spirit, the spirit. The Bible says the spirit of man's the candle of the Lord, searching the inner depth. Amen. If you ever do you ever check your spirit, turn your neighbor and say you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Your spirit, man, knows everything. What? Well, I thank you both. I said your spirit, man, knows everything. The yoke right there that you're coloring, the yoke is the spirit. And the spirit, man, knows everything. You don't have to know everything in your head. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't have to know everything. But my spirit, man, knows I don't have to know everything in my soul and my mind, but my spirit knows. How many, know, how many ever just knew you didn't need to go hang out with those people? Wave your hand in the air like you really do care. How many just knew you didn't need to go to the event tonight? How many just knew before, hey, this is not the right thing? You couldn't tell me why. You just knew in your spirit. The spirit, man, it's like this. Turn your neighbor and say like this. With Jesus. With the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6 that the Holy Spirit is one with our spirit. Everybody say, we're like this. Say, me and the Holy Ghost. Come on, say, me and the Holy Ghost. We like this. We like this. Yeah, absolutely. You and the Holy Spirit are one. And that's why you can't afford to pray prayers like this. God, God, where, where are you, you, you? He's not off there. He's like this with you in your spirit, in the innermost man. Remember the jelly bean. The Spirit of God is one with your spirit. But here's what I want to say real quickly tonight. Everybody say, the living word separates my parts. Yeah. Listen, I want everybody to look at me real quick. We've got to know the living word. I'm not talking about information. Somebody said we don't need more information. We need revelation. We don't just need scripture. We need the scripture and the spirit of the scripture. We don't just need the word of God. We need the word of God and the spirit of the word of God. I mean, you know, there's people that have memorized this, but they're missing Jesus all the time, 24-7, all day long. <laughs> well, I thank you both. It's the truth. Listen, church, we can know a bunch of facts, but if this isn't alive, this, if we don't let the Holy Spirit begin to speak to that jelly bean, to that inner man, that inner part of us, then it does no good. I mean, you know, that's the truth. But listen, this word, if you invite the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to you through this word and will cause you to keep the part separated properly. Come on, somebody better help me tonight. We Turn to your neighbor and say, you need to keep it separate. You need it. There's a reason why the, the word of God is to separate the parts. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes we're living a life that God didn't call us to live because we've got the parts muddled. I don't feel like doing it today. Well, I don't feel like praying. Well, I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like this. Well, that's the flesh. How many you know, so wave your hand here. There's so many things that we go by that is not even the spirit. A lot of times we don't even realize it. It's not even the spirit. You know, the, even the, the idea of people seeing what we do for the Lord. What is that? What part does that please? The flesh. It doesn't gratify the spirit. 
the, the Spirit of God tells us, guess what? I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer I to live, but the Christ that lives in me. And that to raise Jesus up. How many of the Holy Spirit wants people to look at Jesus, not us? Well, I thank you both. The Holy Spirit wants us to look at Jesus. And the Holy Spirit, church, the Holy Spirit will never do something in here or out there that glorifies us. He'll do what glorifies Jesus. That's, That's how you know. How many of you have ever seen something happen in church and you're like, I don't really know whether that was the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not talking about specifically here, but, you know, I mean, I guess it could be. But I'm just saying that there's some things sometimes that people think are the Holy Spirit, but it's making everybody look over at you. That's not the Holy Spirit. If it glorifies me, if I tell you about how good I am and all the wonderful things I've done, that's glorifying me, not Jesus. Now, I know there's a awesome confidence in the Lord, and God uses us, but the Holy Spirit will exalt Jesus. The Holy Spirit will produce peace in us, in that little inner man, that jelly bean. The inner man should have peace. Everybody say, the inner man should have peace. The inner man should have joy, shouldn't he? Shouldn't he? Yeah. And so we know that the Holy Spirit, the Word of God by the Holy Spirit is to separate these parts. To separate, to separate spirit, spirit, soul, and body. Because, because sometimes, sometimes you've got to understand that that's just soulish. It's, it's of the mind. It's of the will, the emotions. But you know, Jesus said, not my will, but yours be done. I mean, you know, Jesus' physical body didn't want to be crucified. I mean, you know, that's the truth. That was pain. His soul, maybe not. But you know, his spirit said, not my will, but yours be done. His spirit said, Father, it's your will. My food is to do. Who, what do you think? What part of Jesus do you think said, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work? It was the spirit man. It was not the flesh. The flesh said, I give me something to eat now. I want to go to the Golden Corral buffet right now. Right? But his spirit said, I've got something to do. That's why we're fasting and praying and stuff like that. How many know that we are literally a week away from the finish line of the fast? How many know that's the truth? Yeah, literally, April 10th, next Wednesday, will be the end of it. And, and the, the flesh, flesh does, does not feel good, good about a fast. The, the flesh, flesh would, would, would like to eat all day long. But, but the spirit craves something more. more. And when we fast and pray, it doesn't do anything for the flesh. Well, you might lose weight, but you know what I'm saying? The flesh would rather eat, but the spirit says, no, there's a food that I'm after. And it's nothing that I can put at my table. It's the word of God. It's the will of God. Amen? And so it separates soul, it separates spirit, and joints and marrow, and it discerns the true heart, the motives and intents of the heart. You know, when you read the Word of God, how many know it reads you? Are you here? The Word of God, everybody said, the Word of God, I don't just read it, it reads me. I woke up this morning, how many woke up this morning and read your Bible? You open it up, and you try to read it, how you doing, Ben? You open it up, and you try to read it, but it reads you. It starts talking to me about my attitude. Anybody else have that? If you, if you aren't hearing it talk about your attitude and about your life, then the Holy Spirit must not be involved. Because I can't open this, but that the Holy Spirit, and invite the Holy Spirit to speak to me, and to not begin to talk to me right where I'm at. And you know, maybe sometimes you read, and it may not be speaking to you, but you just keep reading, you keep pressing and saying, Lord, I have to hear from you. I want to hear from you. Show me your will. Show me your way. And there's going to be the word of God rise up and speak to your heart and your life. How many ready for it? But the word of God, by the Holy Spirit, it will divide to you what is just my soul, my thoughts, my will, and then also what's the will of God, what's the desire of God, or what's of the flesh. Maybe there's some things that you want to do that just, they feel good, and so you want to do them, but the Spirit of God compels you to do something different. How many know we need the living word? In John chapter 8, G, the Pharisee, Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, you know what, my food, go ahead and eat that Spirit. The food... <laughs> the f he said this, he says, you seek to kill me. Listen to me real quick, we're almost wrapping up. Jesus told the Pharisees in John 8, he said, you seek to kill me. And he said, you know why? Because my word has no place in you. My word has no place in you. Church, listen, don't look down on this Pharisee, because guess what? We can become a Pharisee too, really quick. You know why? Because the Pharisees were caught up with an old move of God. They were caught up with Old Testament stuff, and they missed Jesus, the one that it was even portraying and showing who was coming. They missed the Messiah. They were caught up in an old move of God. Listen, if we don't continue to pray, and we don't continue to seek the Lord, and we don't continue to ask the Holy Spirit to come and give us the living word, we will become Pharisees. Do you know that every, every moment that we live in the past, that's Pharisee territory? 
How many know I've talked for weeks about John the Baptist and, and, and Jesus and how that John prepared the way of the Lord, and that was a Holy Ghost move. That was of the Spirit. Everybody jelly bean? That was of the Spirit. But there was a point where, where John's time was done. His, the move of God that God intended to do through John, he finished it. Everybody say, sometimes it's finished. You know what bothers me sometimes? You know, God may have moved in a place, but you know there was a point where the people stopped obeying God, and so the God moved on. This may be uncomfortable for, for some folk, but you know, sometimes there's churches where the Spirit of God is not in it. There's no peace there. There's no joy there. There's no life there. There's nobody's getting saved. Nobody's uh, being set free. Nobody's going out and following Jesus all with all their might. And the Holy Spirit's not there. Somebody say, God's not there. But, but it's a church. church thing. I don't give a flying flip. flip. It, it could be a McDonald's. If, if the Holy Spirit's not there, there who cares? cares? It's, it's just another building. building. Whoa. If, if, the, the, if, if the people don't have the Spirit of God in them, the, the church, church is not there. there. How many you know, know this becomes a church when you get here? Woo! Come on. How many you know that this becomes a church when the people of God that carry the Spirit of God come together here? That's why it's called a church. It's called a place of meeting. When we get here, the God is here, and it becomes a place of meeting. It becomes a church. But the people are the church. But when, when, we, when some places, the Spirit of God is not welcome. God has moved on, and that's when it becomes a tradition, a religion, a Pharisee type of thing. John the Baptist, he had followers. Did you know there were followers of other people besides Jesus? I mean, you know, that's the truth. There were followers of John. There were followers of other people. There was a lot of disciples of folk, but see, John was of the Spirit, and he did his, the work that God called him to do, and his disciples were following, and it was good, and it was Holy Ghost, but then there was a point where it became, this is what we've always been doing. We, we should, should keep, keep doing what we've always been doing. Have I mean, you heard, heard those scary words before? We've, we've always done, done it this way, brother. We've, we've always, always done it this way, sister. Well, you know, we've never thought of moving the piano to the left side. It's always been on the right. Well, I'm telling you what, it needs to move. It's in the way. We're having, a, we're having the youth are now going to praise dance, and it's in the way. You know? <laughs> Listen, how many know that we don't want to be in the way of what God's doing? And you've got to understand something. When I was, I know I'm a little fluffy, or a lot of fluffy, and so fat floats. But let me tell you something. I wasn't always like this, and there was a point where I was learning to swim. How many, how many like to swim? Okay? I like to swim, too. But when I first was learning, I was like, how am I going to keep this thing up, you know? And so my aunt was like, you know, pedal the bike. Anybody ever pedaled the bike before on the water and you're trying to keep up, up above the water? Well, I relate that spiritually too, is that if you don't keep pedaling, your head's not going to stay above the water. This is a walk with Jesus. This is a continual following him. And this spirit part of you has to continually be fed or you're going to begin to try to fight against the very things that God wants to do. Your spirit, man, is hungry for the word of God. And if you continue to let the Holy Spirit Give your spirit the word of God. You will love what Jesus loves, and you will hate what Jesus hates. But if you allow yourself to become like the Pharisees, where they were caught up in an old move of God, if you allow yourself to become like the disciples of John in the spirit in the beginning, but now we're going to do what we've always done. John's still here. We're going to keep following John. You know, John had to die. John had to die. One reason he had to die is because people are still following John. And Jesus is not going to allow anybody to take his place. Did you say Jesus did that, cut John's head off? No, the, 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 the enemy did that. But at the same time, all eyes have to be on Jesus. And sometimes we've got to understand that where you used to be is not where you're going to be now. And it's not where you're going to be. How many say don't camp here? God doesn't want us to look back at the past. He wants us to be thankful for what he's done, but he's got something he wants to do in you and through you now, and we can't be caught up in what was or what has been. What is God saying right now for us? I like to get sentimental sometimes and look back at where we were and what we did in the past and who was with us. But listen, God is doing a new thing now, and it shall spring forth. Don't miss what God has for you now by being caught up in what was and who used to be and all this stuff. God knows all the things that have happened. You say, there's a lot of water that's been on the bridge. I know, but the thing is, God knows where you are. God knows what's happened to you, and he's able to take it and turn it all around for what he's got for you now. Amen. How many of you could look back and even say some of the things that I went through? Some of them were bad things, but God brought you to this place, and he taught you so many things, even through some of the hell that you, had, you went through. How many of you would say, I've been through some hell. 
I've been through some tough stuff, some rough stuff. Some of you have gotten hurt in church by some crazy Pharisee people that didn't know Jesus. You know you can be in church and not know Jesus. Yeah. Their history shows over and over again people that were there, but they weren't there. They were in it, but they didn't get it. And God wants us to be led by the jelly bean, not the just the outward shell and just even what seems good to our mind. You know, I'm, God's called me to work together with the other churches, and we're coming together, we're praying together. And, you know, some people have old ideas that are just not what God's doing anymore. Or maybe God didn't ever do it. Oh, Lord. It was, you know, it was what we did while he was absent. He's always here, but at the same time, when you make your own plan, there's no room for God's plan. I mean, there's been times where I already made up my mind what I was going to do. Have you ever been there before? And so God didn't have an opportunity to speak because I didn't want to hear it. And when he did speak, I said, I rebuke you, Satan. One time the Lord said, hey, that, is, that, person, that woman's not for you. And I just toyed around with it for a little while. I said, I just need a friend. Yeah, you just need a friend, whatever. Okay? But, but see, there's other things that I just want to do. I, want, I, I like new things. Anybody like new things? You like the broken down things? Okay, anyway. I like new things. But you know, sometimes the Lord says you don't need that one. Or you don't need this. And so it's like your flesh wants the new thing. But, you know, the Lord says you got to stick with what you got. I remember one time the Lord said, be content with what you have. I'll never leave you, never forsake you. I was like, oh, I like that scripture. <laughs> I didn't like that scripture. Maybe you don't understand that. But everybody has your own things that God deals with you about. And sometimes you don't want to hear them. But the Holy Spirit is moving. He's leading us. We've got to be led by the Spirit. I think about the body of Christ right now, and, you know, God's moving. He's moving. But listen, it's not going to, church, the, what the God's doing now in you and through you, it's not going to look like what, it, what uh, it has looked like in the past. I was talking with some pastors the other day, and we were talking about what God's doing, and, and we were talking about Azusa Street Revival. There was a mighty revival, and God moved, and he moved between the white people, the white people, the Hispanic people. Everybody was under one roof in some warehouse, and the glory of God was so thick. But, but the, the thing, thing is that, you know what killed it? What, what killed, killed that move of God that was awesome and mighty was that people, and this group that God was moving in, they decided to put their name on the building. This is our thing that God's doing. Right? It's our thing. And they, put their, they made their own little denomination group, and it killed what God was doing. Can you all understand this? What God is doing is so holy, and it's so awesome, but he doesn't want us to mess with it. A lot of times we like to control what God's doing. And listen, he's a consuming fire. You let fire go, baby. I'm not going to go stick my finger in there. Ah, you know, anyway. You know, what God's doing, he doesn't want us to take, say, that's mine. He wants to say, it's Jesus. See, so many people, they, when God's moving, they're like, well, let's make a group. Let's, let's make a name. Let's, let's do this. Let's build a tower. You know? <laughs> let's do this. Let's do that. Let's form our little group. But listen, I found out God's circle is always bigger than ours. There's some people right now that God wants to be a part together that you wouldn't choose to be a part. You say, well, I'm not inviting them to the party. Now, that's not the heart of God. There's people that you don't, you wouldn't normally pick or you wouldn't normally like. Jesus picked people that nobody likes. Well, I thank you both. Are y'all awake tonight? Jesus picked Matthew, the tax collector. Tax collectors were not popular. They stole, they stole from people. You, you know why it was so bad to be, a, be around a tax collector? Because, because what happened with the tax collectors, the government, government said this, you know, any, uh, we want this much, and any extra you get, you get to keep. Oh, Lord. So at tax, tax time, don't you think they got a little extra off the people? Yes, because they could pocket, legally, they could pocket any extra they got. <gasps> yeah, and so people didn't like Matthew. People didn't like Zacchaeus. You remember Zacchaeus, the wee little man was he, right? Okay, well, he stole from people. And, and so, so when, when Jesus encountered his life, he had to give back though that money. He chose in his heart to give back what he had stolen. Because, see, when you encounter Jesus, when a move of God happens to you, things change. You become a giver instead of a taker. You become a lover and a blesser and one that thinks of others. I want to be somebody that loves other people. I was thinking about today so much. You know, I have the Spirit of God in me, and I don't like to hurt people, Ben. I don't like to hurt people, Sister Liz, and I don't understand people that are supposed to be believers that like to hurt people, that are rough with people. I don't get that. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. I don't know if some people that think they know Jesus know Jesus, because I hate for people to hurt. Anybody here hate for people to hurt? I hate for people to hurt.
people to be left out. Why? Because my spirit, man, is one with the Holy Spirit, with God. Turn your name and say, God lives in me. He does. He, in your inner man, he lives there. And he will cause you to love what he loves and hate what he hates. And I hate to hurt people. I hate to exclude people. I hate. And listen, if I do that to you, I'm sorry because that was an accident. Because I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I don't want anybody left out. The way I feel about it is, listen, it's all. We're going after everybody, every tribe, every nation, every tongue, poor, rich, young, old, in between, all of that. Amen? How many of you love people like that? You want everybody to know Jesus. You want everybody to be set free. You want everybody to go with us. I don't want a church left out of what God's doing. How many of you know the body of Christ is coming together in our city and in our region? It is happening now, and it's not because everybody thought it was a cute idea. It's because the Holy Spirit is making us one, and it's awesome. And I don't want anybody left out. I mourn over people that don't want this, that don't get this, that don't get the current move of God. There's some people that don't get the current move of God. It's, it's not, not going to be, well, a place for meeting in our group or what we do. I don't think so. I want to be helping First Baptist. I want to be helping the Methodists. I want to get in there under the lines. I don't want to tell people what we're doing, except for you guys. I don't want us to post it on Facebook. I don't want us to take pictures and say, look at everybody. We're all one. We're all one. Look at us. You know, some people are like that. And it's not the Holy Ghost. It's like, hey, we're white people, so let's get a picture with the black people or let's get a picture with the Mexicans. I mean, how do you know people do that kind of stuff? I want to have a heart like Jesus, and I don't have to have a photograph to show people I have a heart like Jesus. If I have to have a photograph like that, then that means I'm a Pharisee. Hello? And it all has to do with this little spirit. You've got to live from this place. The Holy Spirit wants to be everything to us, and your inner man is where the Holy Spirit lives. And so you've got to have the living word. The Pharisees didn't have the living word. They didn't have a relationship with, with God in the spirit. They were in the flesh. They were in the soul, but they were not in the spirit. How I many know that's the truth? And Jesus told them in John 8, he said, you're trying to kill me because you don't have a place for my word in you. And I tell you what, it can happen to all of us. God wants us to make a place. Everybody say, I am a spirit, I have a soul, and I live in a body. Somebody say, the body is just a shell. It contacts the world. It's the five senses. The soul is my mind. It's my will and my emotions. It must be renewed with the word of God. But my spirit, man, connects with God. Is one with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to just finish up by saying this. You know what? Whatever dog you feed is going to lead, right? The big one is going to win. And if we continue to fill, fill, to fill our flesh, nothing good's going to happen. How many of the flesh can never be satisfied? How many of you have driven on the, the interstate and seen that terrible sign that on the way back from Texas Canada that says, fulfill your desires? I thought, that's just like the devil, isn't it? That is just like the devil. Fulfill your desires. You know, sometimes my desires have to be dead, right? How are we going to be happy people? Listen, here's another thing that concerns me. This is the last thing. It concerns me to see people that are supposed to be believers and there's no smile on their face. There's no joy. Some, turn to your neighbor and say, that, something's messed up about that. It's messed up. I cannot see. You got a believer. No, you got a demon and it got to come out. Believers are not grouchy people. Believers are not mean, hateful people. Believers actually smile and arise and shine. Amen. For the glory of God. And I, there's something wrong when people are bitter and ugly and mean and, and, and know Jesus. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. The spirit man is the one that, that is alive with Christ. And that is exactly the part of you that you want to see. Let's just pray real quick. Father, I just thank you tonight for who you are, and I thank you for every person here. And I thank you, Lord, that they are going to begin to recognize your spirit in them. Every one of us that knows you has your spirit in us. And we want to start following the Holy Spirit. We want to start listening to your voice. Lord, speak to us in your word. We don't want to be carnal people. We don't want to be people that just do what we feel like doing and respond to every mood. We need to be a people that know how to love people, that know how to forgive people, that know how to stand in the gap and believe for others. 
Lord, help us to see the real us in you and, the, and, and listen to your voice. We love you and we praise you for what you're doing. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, God's going to send you people that are hard to deal with. Are you thankful? Anybody have, some of you said, I have that today. <laughs> Me too. But let me tell you something. That's a test right there. Are you going to live with the Spirit? Or are you going to live with the flesh? See, when those people come along, we try, we're like, you know what? We're, we're one in the Lord, except for that person. <laughs> Make our circle smaller. We're one, we're one, we're one. <laughs> except for them and them. No. And then tomorrow, oh, and that person too. And that's the truth. That's what the flesh wants to do. And the Lord convicted me. You know what he told me? He said, love wins. Because I was ready to make my circle smaller. Because you know, it's a lot easier, Sister Liz, sometimes if I just make the circle smaller real quick. But you know what? That's not the heart of God. I mean, you know, sometimes we can just say, hey, I'm going to go up on my little mountain with Jesus and I'm going to leave everybody else. But you know what? God's called you to be one of those shepherd people that has a heart like a shepherd and say, you know, I'm not leaving my sister behind. Some of you know people right now that they were on fire for God, but they're not now. And you know what? Your easy thing is to say, you know, I'm just going to I, I have too much mess with them being. Every time I get around, drama, 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 drama. You know what I'm telling you? I'm going to believe God for them because I remember them on fire. I remember them praying. I remember them in the church. I remember them seeking the Lord, and I love the beauty. Can I tell you this? There's beauty in every person. Everybody get out your uh, jelly bean if you have a if you don't have a jelly bean, we will still not judge you. We will not judge you. If you don't have a jelly bean, come up to this school and get one, and we'll all know. <laughs> Actually, I know I put this here, people. It's called grace. This is the grace of God. Everybody said, this is the grace cup. Because I knew you would eat your jelly bean. Just as God knew you'd be eating some jelly beans, right? So get it. And don't get a black one if you don't want to. I, I didn't know if I should put them in the cup or not. <laughs> that may be too deep of confession tonight. <laughs> Get your jelly bean, replace it. Please don't eat your spirit twice. <laughs> this is your spirit. And I lost what I was going to say. The, the, these people are hard to deal with, but you know what? Everybody's jelly bean's beautiful. That's what I was going to say. It comes back. Listen, sometimes we go by the shell, and the shell's not attractive. Sometimes people's thinking is not attractive. But you know what? Everybody's spirit is beautiful. Y'all get me now? This is the last thing. It really is. The spirit is beautiful. The spirit is who God made them to be. How many know that who God made people to be is beautiful? Who God? And listen, if you're really a, a jelly bean kind of person, how many people jelly bean kind of folk up in here? If you're really a jelly bean folk, if you're really of the spirit, you will look for people's spirit, not just their body. Well, you, you'll look for people's spirit, not just their soulish realm. I mean, you know, sometimes people do what we call flesh out, you know what I mean? Like, ah! <laughs> Some people, they're not, it's not their best day, they had to get up too early. Look at the spirit, though. Everybody say, look at the spirit. The spirit is beautiful. Everybody's spirit's beautiful. And you've got to contend till you see this. You've got to press in till you see this. Because like I said recently, there was, a, there was a person I thought, you know what? We'll just make the circle smaller. That's my flesh. People don't hate on me. Don't hate on me. I've never been that way before. Honestly, you say, I'm just going to make the circle smaller. And listen, you had good reason. They were nasty to you. They were of the wrong spirit. But you know what's sad? Sometimes we get in the wrong spirit because of somebody else's wrong spirit. Well, I know we got to go home. It's already 730. But you know, it's the truth. Sometimes other people are angry and you get angry because they're angry. And now we got two people in the wrong spirit. Doesn't that make it, does that make any kind of sense? Well, they should pray. Now you're getting on them and you're in a critical spirit because they're not praying. That is stupid. And so look at the spirit. Say, God, keep me in the spirit. Keep me looking at things in the spirit. Everybody's beautiful in the spirit. And I don't want to cut anybody out, Sister Lakita. I don't want to throw the towel in on people. I want to still believe. Now, there may be a time where there's got to be distance between me and somebody else. Because they are in the wrong spirit. And some people want to stay in the wrong spirit. Anybody wave your hand in the air and know that's true. There's some people, they will talk about other people till the cows come home. And I don't know about you, but I have to say, hey, I love you, but I can't keep coming to dinner if you don't keep bumping your gums about all these people and their business. I don't have time for that mess. I love you. I'm going to believe God for you, but I'm going to be at a distance. If you change the way you talk, if you'll, if you'll talk nice about people, I'll stay. But if you're going to do that mess, we out of here. 
Let's talk to him. That's a wonderful thing. I heard a youth pastor do that one time. He said, when the youth would come and start talking about another one, I said, yeah, wait a minute. And I just go grab them and put them in front. Now tell them what you were telling them about me. Oh, and then he said, it worked every time. There's people that we know right now, there's no way on earth you would go talk to them about somebody else. Because why? Because they would shut you down. Because guess what? They're jelly bean kind of folk. They're after the spirit. And they will believe. They're kind of like Barnabas. You remember Barnabas and Paul? Paul, hey, Paul was a spiritual awesome person. But there was a time where he said, that John Mark, he drives me crazy. I'm never taking him on another trip again. And Paul, Barnabas said, I'm not going to throw in the towel. I see a jelly bean in him. I see something in him that is of God. And I see something that's beautiful. And I'm not going to just let him go. And he said, we're going to go separate ways because I'm not going to give up on the jelly bean in John. Amen. Amen. Hello. And, and you, know you know what happened? Later on, Paul's about to die, and he needs some paper. And guess who comes? Hey, John's coming with some paper. He's coming with some parchments. He said, oh, I love when John's here because he's really useful to me. See, because there's some people that are after the heart of God, and they know how to contend for the jelly bean in people. And they said, we're not going to drop them. And I pray God just stand with me right now so I'll shut up. Stand up right now. <laughs> I say, God, come on, this is serious. I know we're talking about jelly beans, but this is serious. God, raise up a people in here that know how to be after the jelly bean in folk. That know how to be after the spirit, and we're going to contend until the jelly bean comes out. We're going to contend until the, the spirit man rises up and comes to fruition, the fullness of who you've called me to be. Lord, don't let me be one that does, does away with folk. Don't let me be one that makes the circle smaller. Come on, just begin to open your mouth and say, God, raise up a people. Come on, open your mouth and begin to pray. Say, God, raise up a people here that love the unlovable, that care for those that nobody else cares about. God, raise up us to be hungry for the lost, hungry for the are hurting, hungry for the broken, hungry for the rejected God. You've called us to be after your heart and your mind, God. We want to see people's spiritual self. We want to see the inward man, God. We want to see them as you see them, God. Raise us up. Raise us up for such a time as this, God. Let this be a place where we hold people's hand and we go the extra mile and we refuse to give up or to give in. The Lord told me today, he said, you know what? I want to use faith. I wanted to make the circle smaller, and I had good reason for that, and I wanted to, to be done with folks, and I have good reason for that, and I even want to keep a distance, and I've had good reason for that, reason for that, for that, but my spirit says, no man left behind, no woman left behind, my spirit man says, love wins, my spirit man says, we're not leaving without anybody, oh hallelujah, do you receive it tonight, in Jesus name, amen, eat your jelly beans. Amen, amen. And take one to keep in there. Yes. Awesome. And you know what? You'd really bless Eric and, and care about what Eric cares about if you go like our YouTube channel. You've got to like, subscribe, and ring the bell, people. Ring that bell. Come on, somebody say ring the bell. You just look a place of meeting up on YouTube, ring the bell, like it, follow it, whatever you need to do. I got some announcements real quick. We need 5,000 pieces of candy. 5,000 pieces of candy. They're like free wrapped. We're going to be doing an Easter egg hunt with some other churches in the community. We'll give you the details and the date, but we need 5,000 pieces of candy. The other thing is Palm Sunday. Everybody say Palm Sunday. It's April the 14th, 6 o'clock. We're going to First Assembly of God in Texture Canada on 7th Street. Lauren and I are in a play called I Am, and we want to invite everybody to come to that. And the last thing is, the Nightfire Youth and the Spark Youth are going to have practice Sunday at 5. Okay? Sunday at 5. And uh, we will see you later, but uh, make sure to get a bulletin if you don't have one. We love you. If you need prayer for anything. Now, I'm sorry. Why did I say 5? We're not doing it at 5. We're doing it right after church. I don't know what I was thinking. We're not doing it five. I know. I've got to unsend it. I'm so stuck on the youth. But listen, if I don't do it, if I do it at five, we're going to have to come back. I don't know because I need to sleep more. I just like <laughs> Unsend. Disregard the last message. I think it'll be easier on everybody if we don't make it available.